Hi, everybody. <sighs> Good morning. How's everybody doing? This is a crazy time. Uh, my name is Emily Alexander. I'm one of the worship pastors uh, at Eagle Brook. And let me tell you, as an extrovert who's been quarantined, I am so grateful to be um, a part of this live devotion with all of you. Uh, what a time it is. If you're anything like me, you have felt all the feels. You have felt on the one hand like, this is fine, like we'll be fine, this too shall pass. And in the next breath, you read an article or you watched the news again and or you saw just one too many people with masks on and you're like, now I'm afraid again. And I've been there and feeling all of those things. And so here's the deal, as you join, Okay, side note, I also can't guarantee that one of my children, because it's 7 a.m., you know, it's like prime wake time for kids. Um, I can't guarantee that they won't come in here and either say, like, good morning, or say, can you give me some chocolate milk? So we just, we'll all cross that bridge together. Um, also, here's the deal with my personality, too, is that when I see people saying hi and good morning and watching I'm like it's like a kid in the candy store and so I want to acknowledge all of you but I'm gonna try really hard not to look down otherwise I will acknowledge everyone so I know that you're here we're in this together I am so grateful to anybody who is going to join and watch this in the next few minutes <sighs> I'm just grateful to be a part of this so here's the deal I want to call out that juxtaposition of fear and faith in the scriptures because what you need to know is that the feeling of all the feels also happened with people long, long, long ago. And specifically in the Psalms. In the Psalms, we have this wide range of emotion, deep pain and groaning, and then in the next breath, just pure faith. And so here's the deal. That's how I have felt these last few days, and I imagine that that's the same for you. So let's just call it out together right here in the scriptures. I'm going to be in Psalm 22. All right, it's a very groan-filled psalm, but what I want you to see and what I want you to hear and what I want us to hear together is that there's groaning or there's fear and then there's faith. And, you know, because I'm a music pastor, um, it th this psalm is actually, it says in my notes, a psalm of David to be sung to the tune Doe of the Dawn. I don't think we've ever done that one at our church, but we're going to do that one together this morning. Okay, so it's a, it's a song. It's a song of faith and fear. So I'm going to read verse 1 through 5, and then I'm going to skip around a little bit, um, but I promise I'll try to make it clear enough for you to stick with me, okay? Um, and I am reading the New Living Translation, all right? It says, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. Yet, it's always a yet. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, or enthroned on the praises of his people. That's you, that's me. You are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. You see that? Fear mixed with faith. Let's go on, verse 14 through 15. Now, I'm telling you, this is where the groans get real, real deep, okay? 
verse 14. My life is poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax melting within me. My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. I mean, that is honest groaning. You, Lord, have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. But as I said, there's this pure juxtaposition of fear and faith. And I say pure because it is feeling what we feel. This groan of what in the world is going on? Am I really supposed to stay in my house for the next 14 days? Like what am I, should I be afraid? I don't, Oh, it's it's this it's this concern um, that we have that is shown throughout Scripture. But for the rest of the psalm, he says, "I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your people. Praise the Lord, all who fear Him." He has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them. Same Psalm, fear, now faith. He has not turned his back on them, but has listened to their cries for help. I will praise you in the great assembly. And then he says this, closes with this. Our children will also serve you. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. Come on. They will hear about everything he has done. You see, even in the groaning, there's faith. Even in the fear, there is faith. I think that is what we need to hear, that in the midst of our fear, we can be filled with faith. Even in our groaning, obedience looks like this. Yet I will praise you. Yet I will praise you so that your name and faith rises. Faith rises above the fear. You see, we can groan, we can have fears, and, and it's in those times where our inclination is to turn away or to blame God. But Jesus says, no, 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 come to me. Come to me, all who are weary. He can handle the fear. He can handle the groaning. He can handle the anxiety. But then we are to choose faith, that is obedience. It's in our fear where we have the opportunity to choose faith, to return to faith. And it's not easy. And sometimes our fear is so crippling that faith feels impossible. And if that is you, I understand. And sometimes I think that the only step of obedience is to say, yet I will praise you. In your crippling fear of what is next and what, when is this quarantine going to be lifted or whatever the, the thing is that, is that is crippling you, you would just say audibly, yet I will praise you. He doesn't force himself on us. He wants us to obey and to choose faith. Yet I will praise you. Here are my groans. You can handle my groans. Yet I will praise you. And maybe today it's not faith over fear, but maybe it's faith in the midst of fear. Maybe it's not, I am 
full of faith today in the absence of fear? No, it might be, I am afraid, but today yet I will praise you. It's faith in the midst of fear. Yet I will praise you. Friends, I'm gonna leave you with this picture. My daughter is four and she drew this for me a couple weeks ago and she's very dramatic. And so I was in the, the bathroom getting ready for work, putting on makeup and things and she kind of comes in slowly, inevitably in a dress and she, she hands this to me very dramatically and she just stands there and she says, Mom, this is so you will always remember what Jesus did for you. And she said, this is Jesus on the cross. And so this piece of paper has been in my bathroom, on my mirror, ever since. May we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. And uh, may we be reminded of the childlike faith to just turn and say, yet I will praise you. Hey, I want to pray for this, this crew that's listening, the, the people that will listen, um, our world, uh, you know, the, the people in charge of making decisions, um, on how to move forward. Um, you know, our senior pastor too, Jason, I think we should be praying for him in this time. Um, but thank you so much for joining and for being a part of this. Hopefully I didn't take up too much of your time. Sometimes I'm long-winded. Um, but, but truly, like maybe this is the picture that you have for today that you take with you. And, uh, and let's, just, let's just pray together. Quiet our hearts wherever you are. I'd love to pray for you and with you. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this time, this day that you made, this day that you have us in. Um, it is such a strange time. It's a time where on the one hand we are informed and on the other hand we feel like what is going on. And so in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our anxiety, would we remember yet I will praise you. Jesus, we are so grateful to who you are, to what you've done for us on the cross. And may we remember today what you have done and how you have gone before us, Lord. And you have suffered more than we ever would or ever could suffer, Jesus. So thank you for who you are and how you love us. Jesus, we pray for Jason. We pray for the people um, that are making decisions on what happens next in the life of our church, in the life of our people. Will you just be with um, him as he navigates forward um, and just be with these people be with us Lord we we know you are you are with us we know that and so Jesus may we be people that turn towards you in the midst of fear may we be people that turn towards you in the midst of our anxieties cast those anxieties onto you and say yet I will praise you. Jesus, give me the confidence to move forward in that way as well. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And hey, don't miss the opportunity to, to be home. Pay attention to what God is still doing in the midst of being home. Peace.